Hi, this is Toby. Welcome back to the series where we make a small programming language from scratch uh, using the Nearly.js tool as well as the Moo.js Lexer tool. The language is called Smallang. Um, this time what we're going to do is to make some runtime functions that will support this language, uh, such as print and add and multiply. I meant to say multiply here, but I type multiple for some reason. Subtract, as, uh, so the basic things that a typical programming language can do, we're gonna add runtime functions to do th those. So um, last time we have successfully created a generator, a code generator, taking this, parsing it, generating the AST, and then using the generator to convert that into a JavaScript that looks like this, so that we can make this program actually run and produce the results. We need these add and multiply and subtract functions added to the runtime environment of, of this generated JavaScript. If you can imagine, uh, the only things that are needed to make this program work are these functions, and we can simply define them like so, right? Um, but this is a generated file, so we don't want to just hand edit this file. So what we're going to do is add some extra runtime functions that will get appended to the outputted program here. That way this program can actually run. Before actually doing that, uh, one thing I want to do is make a convenience script to automate the work of first having to call the parse script and then having to call the generate script and then having to call Node.js. So to do that, I'm gonna make a Node.js file and call it run.js. I have too many files open, so let me just close them all. So again, I'll make a, a sync main function. Um, and we're gonna read in a file, uh, which is a dot small file, okay? Can actually steal it from one of the other programs to make this go a little faster. So I'm gonna read the file name from the index two of the argument. Uh, I will say, please provide a dot small file. And once we get the dot small file, uh, this is gonna go through uh, several steps as we've talked about in the past. We start with a dot small file. We're gonna send it through parse.js, which is gonna spit out an AST file. We're gonna send it through generate.js, which is gonna spit out a .js file, and then we're gonna send that through node.js that's going to send us the result and we want to uh, print the results here. Uh, so that's what we're doing. So I'm going to pre-calculate the file name of the AST file and the file name of the JS file here. So I'll say AST file name is going to be file name that replace that small with that AST and the JS file name is file name that replace that small with that JS. Okay, now we're gonna use the uh, exec function from the Node.js library. So we're gonna use this child process dot exec function. However, we wanna use the promiseified version of it. They have given us an easy way to get a promiseified version of the exec function. So I'm gonna just steal those two lines of code in order to get it. So, okay, so now we have an exec function and with the exec function, we can call any command line commands from a Node.js program. And it's a, a, a sync await style function now. I can await on it. So I'm gonna say node parse the file name is the first step. And then the second step would be node generate uh, given the AST file name. And then the final step should be node and then just the JavaScript file name. So this should run all three commands one after another. I'll run it on the example one file. Well, we did get this error, uh, which is the add function is not defined, which is good. Um, I want a little bit more. Uh, we, we're sort of not seeing the output of each of these commands. 
So what I'm going to do uh, is uh, receive the output from each of these commands so that I don't have to rewrite this code over and over again. I'm going to actually make my own exec function, uh, which takes a command and it'll do this bit here. And I believe the output actually has a standard out and a standard in. But I'll print it out, console.log it to confirm that. Um, so, and this is just gonna take in this command that's passed in. So now I'm gonna switch all of these to my exec. And it'll sort of print out the output object, which, yeah, it has a standard out and a standard error. So I'm gonna say, okay, well, if it has a output that standard out, let's print that guy out. And if it has an output that standard error, let's also print that out. Maybe with an error. Okay, so that did it. Um, oh, it printed out an extra new line. That's because the output already has a new line in it. And in Node.js, the way you can avoid having an ending new line is by using process that standard out that right like so so i'm gonna do that for both of these we might use color to color their output later okay so that worked uh the third command evidently errored out and printed this error which is kind of okay because i do get to see this very very blatant error so i'm gonna leave that be i think we're okay with this run script now let's try to give the program some runtime functions to use let's start small and let's try to get this program to work if i do node run.js and example two that small we see unhandled ast node type identifier and that was coming from the generate step. So there's something actually we need to fix before we can even start this process. Let's fix this problem. So generate.js line 44. Uh, we forgot to handle identifiers. Identifiers are just variable references like this one, like we're referring to the name. To fix this is simply that we need to add a if statement to, to handle that particular type of AST node. And I think we can handle it the exact same way we did for a string and number because if you look at the AST of this program, an identifier also has a value, which is the name of the variable. So let's try this again. Uh, no. Oh, I forgot to rename that to identifier. Brain fart. Okay, now we got through that, and now the problem is the function print is not defined, and that was the problem we were setting out to solve in the first place. So let's give this program a function called print. The way I'm gonna do it is actually externalize it into a separate file. I'm call it runtime.js. In this runtime.js, I'm gonna put all of the functions that I want available to this program at runtime, and I'll write print which is just a alias more or less for console.log. I'll take all of the arguments as with a spread operator. That means you can pass in any number of arguments and then I'll call console.log while spreading those arguments back onto the console.log. So if you had this function, then that program should work. A quick way of testing this is you can just paste this in here in the generated code and try running it. That's kind of a cheat. And it does show that this works if this function existed, right? So now to make the whole thing work, what we want to do is have this generate.js script read in this runtime.js and append its contents to the output. Let's go ahead and do that. So we again use fs.read file. I'll say this is runtime.js and we'll read the runtime.js this time. And the runtime.js code should be appended to the end of this JS code. So we'll just do plus runtime.js with a new line just before it. How about that? So now, if we're lucky, then everything just works. Yeah, everything just works. Great. 
Uh, now let's go back to the first code example that needed an add function, a multiply function, and a subtract function in order for that to work. Uh, also, might as well print out the sum as sum. Oh, we don't have commas in this language. So we already have the print function. We just need to add these three more functions to the runtime. Might as well throw in a divide. Okay, I think we have what it takes to run this file at this point. So let's try it. Yeah, the sum is three. Awesome. Is it supposed to be three? Is that correct? Four minus three is one. One multiplied two is two. One plus two is three. Yes, <laughs> it's supposed to be three. Great. Uh, previously, I have uh, added this example three program, and it requires a few more math functions. You know what? Let's do a bonus and uh, add all the functions that it requires this program to work. Okay. Let's have the square root function and the pow function, and I think that's actually all that we need. In JavaScript, there's math that square root. So that's easy. And in JavaScript, there's also pow. Okay, see if that works. Yeah, there's the distance. Uh, yeah, so, so that's adding some runtime functions. I'm gonna stop this episode here. Next time, I think, is the time to add the lambda function to this language. Uh, that's kind of the big boss in terms of difficulty. So uh, I'm excited about it. I hope you are too. Um, so. See you next time.